I love her so much, but she scares me. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. We do have a Wednesday video coming out soon and there's exciting news in that video. So make sure you're subscribed so you can know when that happens. So this week we are doing a video that we hardly ever do. The last time that I did one of these videos was a little over a year ago and that is a video about my tarantulas. So right off the bat I do want to let you guys know that my avicularia avicularia, my pink toe tarantula Nax has passed away. He was an adult male and and as you guys know, adult males do not live very long. I got him as an adult. He had his very last molt with me and then he immediately started trying to do breeding behaviors. He ate a couple more times. Then he just stopped eating and would just pace and pace and pace around his tank. After a few months of that, he passed away. So he did have a very long and happy and healthy life. He just unfortunately was a male tarantula and that's just kind of how life goes for them. But but thanks to Nax, my fascination with tarantulas quickly turned into a love for tarantulas. We are unboxing five. Three of them are from Fear Not Tarantulas, two are from Josh's Frogs. And this did not all happen on the same day. This video has been filmed over a little bit of time, but I have had all these spiders for a little over a month now. We also will be rehousing my Green Bottle Blue. I know a lot of you guys are curious about them, so I thought that I would just kind of make one big tarantula video. So I've just been collecting footage for this video. Anyways, this intro is already very long, so so let's get started. So first up is the unboxing from Fear Not Tarantulas. And I ordered three tarantulas from Fear Not. I ordered a Caribbean Versicolor, a Cirrocosmus Litsi, and a Cirrocosmus Elegans. I am going to be unboxing these into a tub because again, there are two dwarf species and they're going to be so tiny that if they were to crawl out on my brown carpet, they would be impossible to find. Unfortunately, the only color tub that I had was black. So hopefully this video isn't awful. Oh, that's cool. I honestly got this as a freebie and I did not know that it was going to come with dirt and stuff. That is actually really awesome. Oh, they don't pack them in napkins? That's amazing. This is absolutely amazing. For the Caribbean Versicolor, I had actually already set up two different containers for them. That way, if he was a bigger spider, he could go in a bigger space, or if he was a smaller spider, he could go in a smaller space. And I really didn't want to use the smaller container because he is an arboreal tarantula, and they do tend to build their webs at the top, but he was smaller, so that's the one we ended up having to go with. Oh, I can already see him in there. That's amazing. I cannot express to you guys how much I hate unboxing these and having to pull out napkins and being terrified. All right, so this guy's super, super tiny. You can actually see him in there already. He is very small. See him down in there. going to very gently, oh, there he goes. It's a very healthy looking baby. Who just threw poop? All right. Carabina Versicolor is done. It's a very big enclosure. Did not expect him to be that small. We might have to fix that if he doesn't eat. We shall see. Next up, we have the Cirrocosmus Litsi. He is tiny, tiny, tiny. So actually, this is probably a good size vial. You already see him right there. So we're gonna try not to lose him. <laughs> this is actually kind of nerve wracking. Come on. So basically for this one, since he's so tiny, I didn't get very much of me actually getting him out of there because I didn't want to lose him because he was so small. But eventually I did get him out. See, elegance. 
This is another dwarf species that I had a really hard time getting footage of because again, he was so small and so I didn't want to risk losing them. I didn't get her in there and she burrowed and she comes out to eat and she goes back into her burrow. These came from Josh's frogs and they came to me like this and I don't know, I'm assuming they're individually wrapped in here, but I don't know. So we're just gonna open it all at the same time, I guess. And from Josh's frogs, we have a Tilicotl vegans and a Hapalopus species Columbia. And for the Hapalopus, since it is another dwarf species and I didn't know what to expect size wise, I set up two different, very small containers for it. Okay. We have two vials. This is the red rump and the pumpkin patch. Oh, these always make me so nervous. Okay. Maybe the pumpkin patch first, even though it's super tiny. It makes me nervous. I honestly cannot explain enough to you guys how difficult this paper towel was to get out of this vial. As you will see, I ended up not even taking it out of the vial because I physically couldn't. <laughs> I ended up just opening up the end and letting him walk out, which luckily he actually was cooperative and wanted to walk out. I'm kind of nervous about this one too. And the last spider that we have to unbox is the Tilical Vegans. I know I'm not saying that right. I probably haven't said a single one of these tarantula names right. She was a lot more shy coming out of the tube than the pumpkin patch was. I tried to just open it up and let her out and she would not come out even though I could see her. So I just kind of closed the flaps back down so she wouldn't run out and decided to attempt to pull this napkin out of the tube, which actually was a bit easier than the Hippolopus's tube. So you can see that she's a little more sluggish than all the other spiders, which isn't abnormal. She was just shipped across the country in a box. But you can also see that her butt is very bald and big and she is very brown. And the moment that I put her into this tank, the first thing she did was buried it down. And then I didn't see her for three weeks and she did not eat for three weeks and I was terrified. I knew that all the signs were pointing to the fact that she was molting. But for a baby, three weeks seemed very excessive and I was very scared and then as of two days ago, she had a new hole. And then yesterday I saw her two little legs. And then today I actually saw her out for the first time and she had molted and she's eating again. So if you get a tea vegans and you don't see them, just know that they might be okay. Next up is Midori, my green bottle blue. I got her well over a year ago and she's been in the small critter keeper for almost all of that time. You can see here that she can't even move without moving everything in her tank because she's gotten much too big for that critter keeper. So today we are moving her up to a bigger critter keeper. This isn't going to be her final home, but this one should last her for quite a while. And just to show the quick setup because I am rehousing a spider that I already have and it's not just a sling enclosure. I am using Eco Earth. I just bought the bag kind because it is already dried and Green Bottle Blue is like a very, very dry tank. So I'm just putting that in there, putting a little hill in the back for her. Then I'm just filling it with decorations. I got the Stingpunk Skull forever ago and I've wanted to put it in a tank for quite some time. And then I also have this little hand and I thought it'd be perfect to hold a water dish. We're putting quite a few anchor points for her webs because as you saw in that last group, Keeper, she loves to web. That's it. We are going to rehouse her. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I was terrified of rehousing her. She throws hairs like crazy. Last time Reptilian Den rehoused her and he had a handful of green bottle blue hairs and we had to take it out with duct tape. This time I decided not to take any chances and I got full blown dishwasher gloves from Target to make sure that I wasn't going to get hairs in my hands and I'm wearing a long sleeve. You can't see it but I decided to also put on safety glasses and a mask. Thanks so much for the suggestion from Tarantula Collective. I just went full out because I did not want to risk her throwing hairs and me inhaling them because that would be my luck. She's actually really good. I fed her right before 
we rehomed her because she also bolts and she also she's very aggressive <laughs> she does not like human interaction so i thought this would be a good way to calm her i tried to look it up online to see if that was okay and i found nothing about that and she's eating and webbing and everything afterwards so i'm assuming it's okay all right now Can you, oh God, you are a lot bigger than I expected, ma'am. But she held onto her cricket the whole time and it made this whole process so much easier. You can see here that she is too big for this. She couldn't even stretch out fully in this tank and she loves to climb. She could not do that. So she began climbing the ceiling in this tank. So we got her into this new house. And if you're watching this footage and you're wondering to yourself, are Elle's hands shaking the whole time? The answer is yes, because I was terrified because I knew that if she bolted, I needed to be calm. So I guess this is what my my calm looks like. Nope, 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 nope. I love her so much, but she scares me. <laughs> yeah. Done. Yeah. And here she is in her new home, still holding on to that cricket. But just for a size comparison, this is what she looks like in there. Here is her tank after the first night of being in it. And here we are after about a week of her webbing. I definitely need to put more anchor points for her in the front right corner because there is no web there because there's nothing for her to web to. So I need to stick like another branch or something right there. But this is what we've got after a week. And for those of you curious, because I did post about my old one on Instagram, this is my bug shelf. So I have a bunch of spiders on here, empty spider containers for future upgrades and my isopods and springtails. All of that is on this shelf. For anyone that may be curious, unlike reptiles, spiders can have red and blue light because they can't really see most light at all and they cannot see red light at all. And having this light in this shelf has made it so fantastic because now my spiders come out all the time. My green bottle blue, for example, used to never come out. And now I see her all the time, so it's fantastic. That is it. I'm not an expert in tarantulas. I am a newbie to them. Please do not take anything in this video as advice. It's just me unboxing some slings and rehousing my GBB. That's it. So if you want tarantula advice from an expert, then check out the Tarantula Collective or Tom's Big Spiders or Tarantula Cat or The Dark Den. Anyone like that can help you out there. I, however, cannot. This video is just for funsies. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put on a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. Make sure you're subscribed because there's a Wednesday video coming very soon. This week's Instagram shout out is for Christina Michaela for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out is for Dakota Batista for commenting on last week's video. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. But in this video, I will be unboxed. But, but thanks to Nax. Hi. Um, and then, well, Um, as always, if you have not already, please feel free to Batista for following me on, nope. And this week's subscriber shout out is for Dakota Batista for, and this week's subscriber shout out is for, Baco 